Hello friends, my name is Behroz, I'm a finance executive by profession and welcome to my channel where I share with you how you can go about achieving career and financial success. Now in today's video, I will share with you some sample practice questions that you can expect to receive in your IBEW aptitude test for the mathematics section. Not only I will be sharing with you those questions, but I will also be sharing with you how you can go about answering those questions in a very smart and a quick manner so you don't waste any time and you can ace your test. Now, before moving forward, I have to ask for you. One, press the like button as this keeps me motivated in helping me produce similar content like this. And second, press the subscribe button so you get notified as soon as I put a new content on this channel pertaining to financial and career success. So if you are someone who is interested in getting their financial and career journey to the next level, this is the right channel for you. Now, one suggestion before we start going through the sample questions. That is, I've created a separate video where I explain what is IBEW aptitude test and what are the different types of mathematical questions that you can expect to receive in that test. And more importantly, what are the tips, tricks and hacks that you can use in order to solve those questions? So I highly recommend you check out that video first before going through the sample questions. So you kind of have an idea what to expect and how to solve different kind of questions. And once you have that understanding, then you can come back to this video and go through the sample questions that I will share in this video. And talking about tips and tricks, there is one piece which is highly important for you to ace this test is practice, practice, practice. What I did personally is I went through the web and I scrolled on the web in order to look for an online test which mimics the original test. And I found one website which provides sample tests that you can go on that website and practice those sample questions. I will leave the link to that website in the description of this video. You can check it out. Now, the reason that I highly recommend that you go through a sample practice test is for you to become familiar with the kind of format that you will receive during the final test day, which is for you to know what kind of questions you will receive, what will be the timing and what will be the format of the test altogether. So you are familiar as soon as you receive the test and as soon as you start giving the test, you don't have to recalibrate your mind because this is something new. It's a new format. You are already familiar with the format. All you need to do is just start solving the questions. So make sure you go through practicing a sample test and not just only practicing sample questions, which I will be sharing with you in this video. Now, without further any wait, let's start going into those sample questions. Okay, question one, first calculate the distance traveled in one minute. For that, what we will do is we have 100 kilometer per hour. So 100 divided by 60 is 1.666 kilometer per minute. So in two minutes, the motorcycle will travel 3.33 kilometers, which is two into 1.666. So the answer is B, which is 3.33 kilometers. So in question number two, Bill invest $4,000 at 8% compounded yearly. How much will he have in two years? So for the first one year, what we will do is we will calculate 8% of 4,000. 8% of 4,000, one way of doing it is to figure out what is 1% of 4,000. 1% of 4,000 is 40. 8 times 40 is 320. So 8% of 4,000 is 320. For the second year, we'll get another 8% on 4,320. Now this is a difficult calculation. So I can simply assume instead of trying to calculate it, that it will be another 320 and slightly more than that which means 4,000 plus 320 plus 320. So the answer will be more than 4,000 plus 320 plus 320, slightly more than. 4,000 plus 320 plus 320 is 4,640. So the answer will be more than 4,640, slightly more than. So it cannot be A because it is less than 4,640. It cannot be C because C is exactly 4,640. The answer has to be more than that. And then it's either B or D. 4,800, which is D is very high. So I will select B, 4,665. This is a quick way of calculating the answer to the question. Question three, a waitress serves eight tables. Question number three, a waitress serves 10 tables one evening on her shift from six to 12 p.m., which is six hours. She makes 10.5 per hour plus tips. Her total bills come to 240.6 with an average tip of 12%. How much did she make? So first we calculate her total normal shift wage, which is six hours into 10.5. Six into 10 is 60, six into 0.5 is three. So 60 plus three is 63. That is a quick way of calculating it. Now we need to calculate how much tip she makes. So 10% of 240.6 would be 24. So 12% would be slightly more than 24. So we can add 63 in plus 24 and the answer will be slightly more than that. 
which would be 87. So our answer would be more than 87. The only option I see here, which is more than 87 is 91.87. So we will select answer C. Again here, note that I'm not doing exact calculations. I'm doing some rough calculations, trying to reach as close to the options or one of the answers as possible, and then picking the answer which is closer to that option which I have calculated or the answer that I've calculated. Question four, 15 is what percent of 200? Here again, let's start with 10. 10% 10 of 200 is 20, which means that 15 would be less than 10%. So it cannot be 15, it cannot be B, it cannot be 20%, it cannot be C, it cannot be D, which is 17.5, so it will be A, which is 7.5%, because we know that for that 15 of 200 will have to be less than 10%. Again, quick math. Question five, a boy has five red balls, three white balls and two yellow balls. What percent of balls are yellow? So we add all of them together, which is five plus three is eight plus two is 10 and two of 10 is 20%. So C is our answer. Question six, add 10% of 300. 10% of 300 is 30 to 50% of 20. 50% of 20 is 10. So our answer is 30 plus 10 is 40. Question seven, convert 75% to fraction. Is Now here we will do elimination. Is two by 100 75%? No, 75 by 100 is 75%, yes. Three by four is also 75%. So we will select three by four because three by four is a simplified version of 75%. So C is our answer. Question eight, convert 90% to a fraction. Is one by 10 90%? No, so eliminate. Nine by nine, no. 10 by 100, no. Nine by 10, yes, so D is our answer. Question nine, a man buys an item for $420 and has a balance of $3,000. How much did he have before? So this means he had more than $3,000 because now he's only left with $3,000 after using 420, which means the answer is 3,000 plus 420, which is B. Question number 10, divide 9.6 by 3.2. Here I will use elimination method as well. I will round 3.2 to three and multiply three with 3.5. Three into 3.5 would be nine plus one and a half. So three into three is nine, three point three into point five would be 1.5. So it would be 10 and a half. No, three into three would be nine. So B is close and rest all numbers will be way off. So B is should be my answer, closest answer. Because I can't select C, I can't select D. A is close, but A I can do a quick math. And then if I do B, B is 9.6, so B is my answer. Question number 11, if X equals to seven, solve three X plus five minus two X. Here it's best to solve the equation first before putting seven into place of X. So three X minus two X is one X. So one X plus five, which means X plus five. X is seven, so seven plus five, which is 12. So X equals to 12, which is option B. Question 12, solve for under root of 121. My math is not that good, so I will start using our elimination method. 11 into 11 is 121, so A is my answer. I didn't have to go further down. Question number 13, solve three X minus 27. What we will do here is 27 will go on the right side and the sign will change, which it will become three X equals to 27 and then I will divide both sides by three. If I divide left side by three, only X is left. And if I divide 27 by three, nine is left. So C is the answer, X equals to nine. Question number 14, solve the following equation. Four Y plus six, four into bracket, four into bracket. Question number 14, solve the following equation. Four into bracket Y plus six, bracket close, equals to three Y plus 30. Here, open the bracket and then move y on one side and all the other numbers on other side. So it will become 4y plus 24 equals to 3y plus 30. Move 3y to the left side, the sign will change, which becomes 4y minus 3y. And on the other side, it will be 30 minus 24. 4y minus 3y would be y, and 30 minus 24 would be 6. So answer is A. Question 15, solve for under root of 144. And here we will use elimination as well. So I'll start with A, 14 into 14. So what is 14 into 14? I'll break 14 into 10 and four, and then multiply 14 by 10, and then multiply 14 by four. So 14 by 10 is 140, and 14 into four, this will become more than 144. So I don't even need to solve it. So the answer has to be below 14, below option A. 
The only option which is below 14 is option D, which is 12. I don't even have to solve it. I'll just pick 12. Question number 16, under root of 75 plus under root of 48 minus under root of 3 divided by 0 0.01. This is a difficult one. So here I will first solve for 3 divided by 0 0.01. 0 0.01 is actually 1 divided by 100. So if there is 3 divided by 1 by 100, 100 goes up. So this number will become 300. So it is actually under root of 300. So essentially what we were we are solving here is under root of 75 plus under root of 48 minus under root of 300. Under root of 300 is such a big number and it is a negative number that even if we combine 48 and 75 under roots together, it will still be smaller than 300, which means the answer, whatever the answer is, will have a negative sign to it. The only option where there is a negative sign before the answer is option A, so option A is our answer. Here in question 18, factor the polynomial x cube into y cube minus x square into y raised to power 8. Here, what we will do is find the common factor between the two, which is x cube and y cube and the other one is x square and y raised to power 8. The common is x raised to power 2 and y raised to power 3 because we can easily take out x raised to power 2 from the, both the sides and easily take out y raised to power 3 from both sides. So x raised to power 2 and y raised to power 3 can come out and the rest whatever is left can stay inside the bracket. So which option gives us x raised to power 2 and y raised to power 3 outside? It is option A, so option A is our answer. Okay, in the next question, using the factoring method, solve the quadratic equation, which is x squared minus 5x minus 6. So here you have two options. One is solve the equation and second is use the values in the answer and plug them in the equation and see which one is right. I will use this latter option, which is minus 6 if I plug it in. So minus 6 into minus 6 is 36. 6 into 6 is 36 and minus becomes plus. So 36 minus 5 into 6 is 30. Again, it will become plus as well. Now, this is going bigger than 0. So, no, this won't be the answer. Let's take B. So, even D cannot be the answer because both of them have minus 6 and minus 6. So, A and D are cancelled out. Now, we are left with B and C. If I use B, minus 1 becomes 1 for square. Minus 5x becomes 5. So, 1 plus 5 Mine is 6 minus 6 equals to 0. So minus 1 is true. So B is the option. If minus 1 is working, the other one will work as well. So B is our op option for question number D. Question 21. Find two numbers that sum to 21 and the sum of the squares is 261. Again, similar to the previous question, we'll try each answer. So 14 plus 7, is it 21? Yes, it is 21. And what is the square of 14 and 7? So square of 7 is 7 into 7 is 49. And 14 is a difficult one. So we will do square of 14, which is 196. So 196 plus 49 is 245. No, so that is not our answer. So if anything, the number has to be bigger. Let's take 15 plus 6 is, yes, 21. What is 15 into 15? is 225 plus 6 into 6 is 36, 261. So B is our answer for 21. Again, this can take slightly longer if you go one by one, but once you solve one, you kind of get an idea of where your answer should lie. So which numbers are closer to the answer? Question 22, using the factoring method, solve the quadratic equation, x raised to power 2 plus 4x plus 4. Similar to the previous one, I will go through the elimination method. So if I do 0 square is 0, plus 4x is 0, plus 4. No, 4 equals to cannot be equal to 0, so that is not an option. Let's take option B. If I put in 1 in place of x, so it will become 1 plus 4 plus, no, this is not possible. So let's take 2. 2 won't be possible as well because the numbers are all positive, so it has to be a negative number. So let's try the last one. So minus 2 square is 4, minus 2 into 4 is 8, minus 8, which means 4 minus 8 is minus 4, and then we add another 4, it becomes 0. That is our answer. So the last question here, what we need to do is we need to solve the equation. Again, I will find a quick way, which is let's add all the raised to power 5. So 3y raised to power 5 plus 2y raised to power 5. This becomes 5y raised to power 5. So which option has 5y raised to power 5? A has it, C has it. So we can eliminate B and D. So either our answer is A or it is C. Let's take another quick one, which is the numbers which don't have a Y linked to it, which is 5 
and the, on the other side it's 2 so 5 plus 2 is 7 so our answer should also have 7 we don't have 7 in C we only have 7 in A so A is our answer thank you for watching this video hopefully after watching this video you will be now able to ace your IBEW aptitude test best of luck